How's it going guys? My name is Dom and today I want to talk about the set timeout function in JavaScript. So essentially the set timeout function allows you to delay a function from executing. So you can use it to create pauses or delays inside your JavaScript code. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to create a button on this document right here and when you press that button it's going to show a message to the user after a specified amount of seconds have gone by. So let's create that right now. Inside the source file, just going to make that button um, inside the body here. So let's make a new button and give it an ID of something like open um, or let's just say show dash message. Okay, so show message just like that. Inside here, let's just say um, show message. So saving this and refreshing the page will give us this right here. So when we press on this button, we want a alert box to be showed to the user after something like two seconds have gone by. So let's create that right now. Inside the JavaScript, we can start by getting a reference to that button. So Let's make a new constant here and call this one um, btn show message or just msg, okay? Equal to um, document dot get element by ID and we're going to pass in the ID show message um, right there, which um, references that button right there. So now btn show message means that button right there. So let's now add an event listener to that button. So we're going to add a listener for a click event. So when the button um, gets clicked, we want to actually run a function. So let's say btn show message dot add event listener. We're going to add the click event to that button. Um, inside this function here, this will be the function to execute when we press the actual button. So inside here, we can write the code to actually display a message to the user. Okay, so um, for now, let's just say alerts and we'll say, how's it going? All right, let's save this and refresh and then press on this button. And we get that right there. So this is obviously instantaneous. We wanna make this happen after two seconds have gone by. So Let's do that right now using the set timeout function. So back inside here, let's change this code here to instead use the set timeout function. All right, so down here, let's type this out. Let's say set timeout, just like that. And then we're going to pass in here a function, which will be the actual code to be executed after the delay. So let's put a arrow function inside here okay actually let's go with a regular function let's put a regular function inside here all right nothing fancy so inside this function let's move this alert inside there all right just like that then we'll put a comma for the second argument to the set timeout function this is the delay in milliseconds so if we want two seconds that is 2000 milliseconds. So let's put 2000 inside here. We are now done. So now this is saying set timeout. We're saying run this function right here after 2000 milliseconds or two seconds have gone by. So um, saving this and refreshing the browser will give us this result right here. Let's press on the button. One, two, there we are. How's it going? So we can see how it works right there. Now, um, you can actually cancel the timeout and interrupt it from happening. Okay, so this is done by um, keeping track of an ID which represents the actual timeout itself. So what we'll do is we'll actually create a second button on the screen, um, which will be something like interrupt uh, message when you press on that one, it's going to stop 
the message from showing after you press on the show message button. So let's create that right now. Back inside the HTML, let's just add a new button for that functionality. Let's say um, cancel, cancel message for the ID of this button. So cancel message and for the content, we'll say cancel message. Okay. So now we have this right here. Okay, so when we press on this button, we want to say boom on that one and then cancel the message from showing. So what we can do is we can get a reference now to the second cancel message button. So once again, let's make a new constant and we'll call this one btn cancel message equal to um, get by ID. Um, the ID will be cancel message right there. So now we can add an event listener to this function, which will then interrupt this timeout from occurring. So down here, let's say btn cancel message. Once again, add event listener. We're going to listen for the click event right there. Pass in a function to be executed. Alrighty. Inside here, we're going to make use of the clear timeout function. So it's called clear timeout and it looks like that. So inside here, you pass in a number which represents a timeout. Okay. So let's just say clear timeout and pass in MSG timeout. So this variable right here currently does not exist, but we're going to create it using the set timeout function. So up here, let's now create the message timeout variable. We'll say let's new variable message timeout is equal to for now. Let's just say null. Okay, it doesn't currently exist. Now, inside here, we're going to say message timeout is equal to set timeout and then that existing code right there. So this will actually give us a number which represents that timeout and put it inside the message timeout um, variable and then this right here will take that number and then cancel the timeout. So now um, saving this and refreshing should give us the desired result. Let's save and refresh. Okay. Let's press on this, then that one, and we get no message. Let's um, try again, this time pressing on that and then leaving it and we get the message. So we can see how that works. Now, I'll just show you one more thing. I want to show you the actual value of the message timeout variable. So um, when you press the cancel button, let's just console.log, let's log out the message timeout um, the variable before we clear the timeout. So saving this and refreshing, all right. We press this now, we get null in the console. So there isn't currently a timeout um, or a, a value set to the timeout um, variable. So um, if I was to now press this show message function or button, and then I press that, we get one. All right, so um, one was the ID representing the timeout that is right there. All right, and that is how you can use the set timeout function in JavaScript to delay your code. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you later.